Do you like the virtual reality? Yeah, this is awesome. Comfortable. Do you get awesome? Do you get car sick? Uh, no, I don't. I hope you don't. Nah, no, no, I don't. Well, we'll soon find out. <laughs> Welcome to Autoblogs Translogic. I'm Jonathan Buckley. CES is without a doubt the largest tech show of its kind in the world. Every year, thousands upon thousands of people converge on the Las Vegas Convention Center to check out the latest in cutting edge technology. And with autonomous vehicles, connected cars, and future concepts on display, the auto industry is here in force. So let's see what they've got to offer. Well, if 2016 was the year of virtual reality, 2017 is the year that it finally got put to use en masse all over the show floor to give people like this fully immersive experiences. That's remarkable. That's the first time I've been able to see my own hands on virtual reality. We came to CES to see the future and we found it right away. All of the big automakers seem to agree the future is electric, connected and autonomous. By 2030, 15% of new vehicles sold could be fully autonomous. In 2030, electric cars could account for 25% of new cars sold in urban areas. By 2025, virtually all cars could be connected to the internet. Ford showcased its connectivity plans by announcing a partnership with Amazon, which will allow your car to connect to your home through Amazon's personal AI assistant, Alexa. So you're saying that within the car now, just using your voice control, you can command Alexa at home to prepare the house for your arrival. Exactly. So Alexa has thousands of skills that you can enable. And a lot of it has to do with home, smart home connectivity. Got you. Alexa is really very, very conversational as well. So it's designed without a screen. And that really fits well on the automobile experience, right? So you're driving down the road and you ask for the weather and you don't just get, it doesn't look so good tomorrow and then you have to look at your phone to get all the details. You get a very detailed description because that's how the user interface for Alexa was designed at your home. It's audible only. Ford also announced plans to offer 13 new electric and hybrid models by 2021, including electrified versions of the iconic F-150 and Mustang. You, you talk to a Mustang owner, they love that, that performance, they love that bone-crushing torque, they love that launch feel. But when you start explaining to the person that you're going to get a huge torque increase at 700 RPMs, a power improvement, yep. and fuel economy, they really get excited. I think you'll maybe agree with me when I say that I haven't driven many uh, regular gas-powered conventional engine cars that will have the kind of punch and that launch feeling that you will get with something that has a hybrid Absolutely. or a fuel electric and that's, that's one of the things that actually we have, we've had to work on is uh, how do we make it so that the, uh, the launch is not too abrupt. That torque can be absolutely instantaneous with electric motor. 2021 is also the magic number for Ford's autonomous division. That's when they plan to put their level four autonomous ride-sharing car into full production. Here at CES, autonomy is on the tip of everybody's tongues and it has been for quite a few years. What's the biggest challenge ahead of us before we can really see these things on the road? It's a common discussion that everybody's having right now. I think generically the biggest challenge is just the making it robust in every situation, being able to handle situations that you might not have explicitly seen before, you might not have explicitly uh, coded for. Humans are actually pretty good drivers, and to make a car that's safer than a human is a really hard problem. So we've gone through level one and two autonomy, and then you guys decided, uh, scrap number three, we'll go straight to number four. Mm -hmm. The reason we're skipping level three is because the human-machine interface between autonomous driving and human driving is very hard to get right. The handoff between when the car is driving autonomously, it realizes it can't uh, handle a situation and it expects the human to take over, is a very hard problem to get right, especially when people stop paying attention when they, when they think the car is in control. And so our solution to this is to just make the car handle everything in level four. Right. So that means the driver does nothing, the car does everything. Right, so our production vehicle um, will not have a steering wheel or gas or brake pedals. It right. won't have it? Right. Wow, OK. And your solution is these guys right here, the LiDAR sensors. What we have on the car from a sensor standpoint is we have a LiDAR, we have cameras, we have radar. Right. Um, they all give us a 360 degree view of the, of the environment around us. Well, you've got a display here that the crowd, I think, is finding very entertaining. We've got these screens above us, which yeah. is in real time. A lot of people thought it was an animation, yes. but it's real time. Yes, yes, it is both of these LiDARs giving us a live view of the world at very high frame rates, at very high you know, fidelity. Um, right. So you can see there's lots of points, right? We're getting millions of points. We are currently testing the level four vehicles on public roads in Michigan, Arizona, and California. So, you know, this is a real thing that's happening right now. 
Another company who says they're ready to go into production is Faraday Future, who in one year's time have gone from a sci-fi concept to a vehicle they say is ready for the street. Last year we saw the FF01. Correct. That was a car that was, I guess, designed and was kind of... It was a sculpture, right? Yeah. yeah, it was like a future idea of what cars could be. And yeah. This is a pretty big departure from that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. this is a, a, a totally ready production car. Your original car, the FF01, was clearly like a supercar, a sports uh -huh. car. This car, how would you describe it? Because it's not really a sedan, it's not really an SUV. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, we think it has all the benefits of all of those things you were just mentioning. Um, it, it has no compromises. If you want to drive, uh, 0 to 60 in 2.39 seconds. Or you want to be in the back seat, watch a movie, have a massage, be in zero gravity, that's okay too. Hold on a second. We're going to go back a little second because you said 0 to 60 in 2.39 seconds. Yeah, fastest production EV on the road. Wow, so you're saying to me that you basically got a family SUV, what looks like a family SUV, that is faster than a Porsche 918 uh, Spider. It's, it's, it's a million dollar supercar performance. It's an electric vehicle. Are we talking all-wheel drive? Yeah, and, and four-wheel steering. Four-wheel right? steering. So even though it's a big car, yeah. it behaves like a little car. Because it's quite long. Yeah, it yeah, appears yeah. quite long. Yeah, so you get all the benefits of interior space. Yep. But it drives like a little car. And it's level four autonomous as well. Yeah. Okay, so for those who don't know, explain a little bit level four autonomy. What does that exactly yeah. mean? Well, for example, in our demo we showed during our launch event, the car found its own parking spot, chose the one that it liked, and backed up into it. That's for No driver. And the vehicle's done it by and itself. And then by your phone, you know, uh, uh, to pick you up, and then it'll come back and pick you up. And we demoed that on the third. That, that's real deal. So when do you think foreseeably, realistically, could we see the FF91 driving down at one of our streets? I can't give you an exact date, but soon. Well, Faraday Future have some pretty lofty ambitions, and I really hope, as a car enthusiast, that they can make it happen. So let's take a look at a company now who are looking even further into the future to 2030. Concept Eye is Toyota's vision of 2030 and kind of how basically autonomous driving and artificial intelligence can actually be fun, exciting, yep. engaging, and yeah, it's not just a silver tubed future where things just shuttle you to and from. It actually is filled with warmth and energy and humanity. It's, it's a thoughtful reflection on what we think technology, how we want to relate with it in the future. We started with the UX, which we call UE, which is Japanese for connected. Yep. And that's where the entire design started. From that point, we worked to the interior, to the exterior, which is a really unusual thing. I think it's very easy for designers and futurists to think a linear progression of today is we all have a smartphone. So in the future, the, the car is filled with tablets and smartphones. It's filled with information. UE and Concept Eye is smarter than that. You see this, the displays, they're not everywhere. They only come out of this beautiful kind of white ceramic material, provide you the info you want, and then it's gone. And you can see Yui, when you sit inside there, there's a slight level of vulnerability that kind of draws empathy from you. Yeah. The point of it is that we create a conversation, a companion, a, a, a co-pilot yeah. that you actually interact with and she or he, whatever gender you assign to it, will basically get to know you over time through shared experiences. And the car learns your personality. Learns your well. personality, correct. And so safety applications as well. Say you've just got into the car, you found out that your wife's cheating on you, you're, you're, you're having a bad day, you start driving a little bit recklessly, right. Yui's going to well, understand that. Yui would understand your emotions and kind of figure out what's going on and try to say, well, maybe I should take control or let's go for a drive by the ocean. <laughs> when I came across this booth today, I was like, yes, this is why I come to CES. This is one of the most comprehensive looks and glimpses into the future and into the distant future that I've seen on the floor so far today. So Thank you. To me, the most exciting thing about CES this year was seeing technology that's been around for years finally coming into its own and fulfilling its potential. Ideas that were science fiction are now real and ready for the world. Did you watch Knight Rider when you were a child? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> would you have thought you would have seen it in your lifetime, though? I mean, we watched a TV series with a, a talking car that drove itself. We're in the Ford booth. Yeah. We have both of those things right now. 
You know, the speed of innovation is amazing. Well, CES has been wowing crowds for the last 50 years with the latest in electronics and gadgetry. It's still here, stronger than ever, and we think the involvement of the automakers has only served to make the show even more exciting. For Autoblogs Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. Catch you next time.